Hey guys, it's Ryder here with another Once Upon a Time Season 5 review. This is Episode 2 of the brand new season, The Price. So, yeah, fifth season of Once Upon a Time, second episode. I mean, just it's this is such a great installment, this story, with Emma Swan being the villain, the dark swan, the dark one. So, uh, you know, we just got a lot deeper into what actually happened back in Camelot, in the Enchanted Forest, and uh, kind of a little bit more about some of these, uh, you know, characters that we've known for a while, and some even newer characters that we've known for a very short amount of time. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and let's get right into it. With, uh, yeah, we'll do be doing another top five moments from this episode right now, starting with number five. Merlin is in the tree. So, yeah, we know that Merlin, you know, the wizard, Merlin, um, who prophesied the coming of Emma Swan and the whole crew from Storybrooke to the Enchanted Forest, more importantly, Camelot, um, on a certain at a certain point in time. And, of course, we know that certain point in time was about six weeks ago, before Emma Swan had, you know, over just you know just sort of became the the actually evil big dark one so right now we have this this plot where you know we have to figure out why merlin prophesized them coming and what happened now the twist is you know of course emma and the whole story brooke crew they're looking for merlin to get the darkness out of emma and you know we assume that they have no clue at all where it could they you know where Merlin could possibly be, but of course King Arthur and some of the knights and Guinevere they know they already know where Merlin is. He's inside this big willow tree, so he's inside a tree, and they're thinking you know that's the most that's the we mean we've gone through a lot of stuff. Peter Pan. You know, Wicked Witch, Snow Queen, Anna and Elsa, you know, Korra, and this powerful wizard is stuck inside of a tree. Hmm. So, that was a big thing. Because, obviously, Merlin's not, like, he hasn't, it's not like it's going to be a mystery where they have to look for clues as, you know, where did Merlin go? No, they know where Merlin is. It's just that how... What happened in Camelot six weeks ago that Merlin didn't get the darkness out of Emma? Why were they not able to get Merlin out of the tree? And uh, it kind of comes from Regina pretending to be the uh, savior. It was mainly just to save Emma from, you know, using her dark magic and powers. And, of course, Regina does have the dagger, or at least six weeks ago in the flashback she did. So, now Emma has the dagger, but uh, it's, I don't know, it's kind of crazy how that all happened, you know. Um, what I kind of like about this is that they're working backwards. I don't think they've ever really done that in Once Upon a Time. Uh, in the past seasons, what we've seen is, you know, we've seen the flashbacks correspond with the, you know, current story in a way like this same type of event happened, you know, back in the Enchanted Forest years and years and years ago. But this is kind of corresponding where it's like in present day when, you know, where Emma Swan is this dark one, where you have that happening, you have, and you have this, the whole story book crew, they're trying to figure out what, you know, what in hell could... How can we get Emma back, and how can we get this darkness out of her? And they're working their way backwards, like, how did this all happen? And then we see it in the flashbacks, you know, what actually did happen. So, uh, it's kind of, that's kind of cool, but there's definitely something there with Merlin. So, I was very excited about that. Number four, this fury monster. So, this, I, I believe they called it a fury. Uh, and a fury is this, like... A demon from hell that comes and it, it needs to take like a it takes like a soul or something and it's about like bidding and you have to take a life or something like that it's all about bidding like uh you know so like payback in a way where it's like if you deserve this then it's gonna come to you anyway so everyone thinks Emma Swan you know summoned this demon thing but it actually wasn't it was Regina because Regina 
didn't, she did, Regina didn't physically summon it, it was just her actions did. So it's like things that happened, you know, not so long ago have reflected on why this fury demon needs to come. It wants to take Robin's life, but, uh, you know, of course, it doesn't exactly happen. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of like an interesting twist. This, was, this, to me, was probably the weakest part in this whole story. I mean, of course, uh, you know, it's always cool to see their demon things. I mean, if you really think about it, we have seen, you know, about every couple, of, like, always in the first couple episodes of every season of Once Upon a Time, there's usually, like, a monster thing that can fly that usually takes one of the main characters. Like, if you think about the season two premiere, I forget what it was called, but that specter thing, it took Mary Margaret and Emma and brought them into the Enchanted Forest. So, you know, all this stuff happened, um... But, uh, you know, it's, uh, kind of, it was kind of, kind of interesting, you know, the special effects were cool. Uh, you know, honestly, it just didn't feel like the strongest part in the story, but of course, I think they needed something to occupy, uh, the main storybook crew. So you see that. Uh, also, kind of a side story, you see Leroy and, uh, Belle, they start to form some sort of, like, a very close, much closer friend relationship. And that's pretty cool, you know, to see characters like that, you know, uh, kind of just from completely different stories kind of come together. So that was pretty cool. Uh, moving on to number three, Henry's new love interest. So, yeah, this was kind of a bigger one for me because I think uh, throughout all of the seasons of Once Upon a Time that we've seen so far, Henry has never really had a true love interest, somebody that he really like, I'm not saying that we don't know that much about this girl. We don't know the relationship she's really going to have with Henry. But you you saw that they obviously took some time to show that, you know, Henry likes this girl. in bo Both in the flashback six weeks ago when he met her, and even in current day, uh, when they uh, everyone's memories were erased, and they met again for the first time in the same, in the, like, in a similar kind of way with, by music. So, you know, it, obviously you can see that there's something there. I maybe once or twice we saw some like uh, minor love stories with Henry, but they weren't really love stories because he was a lot younger. But uh, you could kind of see that this is definitely going to be something that at least you know is going to definitely going to have some plot around it within the next few episodes. Um, you know, we don't really know too much of who this is. I I don't remember if it's uh, I don't think it's it's not uh, King Arthur's daughter. I don't believe. But uh, it, it's one of the knight's daughters. I, I think it might be King Arthur's daughter or something like that. I Honestly, I don't remember those details. But uh, I, she's obviously related to some royalty blood within Camelot. And, uh, you know, she, she and Henry are, have become friends. So, uh, you know, uh, I think that David, you know, Prince Charming, he's going to have some, some influence on how Henry, uh, you know, kind of works that relationship in a way. Uh, we already saw that kind of happen a little bit in this episode, but if you, I mean, if you think about it, it's Prince Charming. You know, of course you want to get some advice from Prince Charming. So, I don't know. I think that's going to be pretty fun. I thought it was a nice little fun story to, you know, kind of throw in there. And uh, kind of like maybe, maybe Emma's reaction. You know, Emma's going to be able to have that leverage on Henry if she ever needs it. And Regina is always going to be protective, so I think it's going to be a fun plot. Number two, Regina pretending to be the savior. So I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, I wanted to talk a lot, just get go into more detail with this. So uh, you know, of course, if you remember, which you probably have, and you probably do, but through from season one of Once Upon a Time to I'd say maybe. I don't know, halfway through season four of Once Upon a Time, uh, or maybe even the beginning of one, season four of Once Upon a Time, it, I think it was about halfway through se one, se uh, Once Upon a Time season four, right like halfway, uh, we saw Regina have a real true dark side to her. Like, uh, even when she tried to be good, there was still that burning evil inside of her. And she was actually the main villain in season one. And Emma was the savior. Emma's always been the savior. Now, because now Emma's the dark one, she's not the savior anymore. Basically, that's kind of, I think, what they're trying to get at. Emma is, can't be the savior anymore because she's the dark one, so you need a, a new savior. 
Now, Regina trying to take on the savior role, uh, both in the fl flashback six weeks ago and in current day, for different reasons, of course, but she's trying to do it, um, just to ki kind of, because, like, you know, if you, if this, if Storybrooke never had a savior, if Emma Swan wasn't the savior and Emma Swan didn't exist, I mean, if you really think about it, Storybrooke would have been gone years ago. You know, back in season one, Regina would have taken over and, you know, the Wicked Witch would have came by to, you know, stand next to her and same with her mother, Cora, and Captain Hook, because Captain Hook was originally evil, kind of, with Cora. And we'd see Peter Pan there, and we'd see the Snow Queen, and we'd see all these evil beings next to each other. And, you know, Storybrooke wouldn't have been there. Now, the, the fact that there's technically no savior anymore, Regina is trying to step up in that place. And uh, we saw in the flashbacks that, you know, even when she tries to be a savior... You know, there's people who recognize her for, as the evil queen, and she's never going to lose that reputation. She's never going to lose that image, in, even in her own mind. So I thought that was really cool. But I think in the final battle, I think you're going to see Regina versus Emma. And the roles are going to be flipped from the way it was in season one. You're going to see Emma at the darkest she possibly can be. And you're going to see Regina as the savior, as truly the savior, with the power of the savior. And I think that's how they're going to play it off. I'd be re I'm really excited to see this story play out. And uh, let's try to let's get on the other half of that with number one with Emma Swan, um, and specifically Emma Swan trying to uh, mend the Dark One dagger and Excalibur. So let's kind of talk a bit about King Arthur to start this off with. So King Arthur and all of his friends from Camelot they have come to Storybrooke. He's like. Where the hell am I? Who the hell are you? And, you know, they're saying their memories are erased, you know. They don't even have any recollection of meeting him and, and going to Camelot, you know, six... or No, you know, that's not true. They do remember that because they... It was right when they walked into Camelot. That's when they didn't know anything. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's how it was. So, uh, you know, King Arthur's here now. And... Uh, you know, what's, what's going on with him is he can't find Excalibur now. Excalibur is missing. And if you remember, you know, that's always King Arthur's big quest. Find Excalibur, pull the sword out of the stone. So that was sort of like the introduction to like where the hell is Excalibur. It had to have come to this world as well. And then at the very end of this episode, we find out that Rumpelstiltskin and Emma, they have Excal Excalibur behind the secret door that goes underground. And uh, I think Emma's living in Regina's old house. So she has all the secret rooms and stuff. So that goes down to the mines, and Emma is about to pull the sword out of the stone, but she obviously can't. And she's trying to do that so she can put this Dark One Dagger and Excalibur together. So I think the, at the end of this story, we are going to see the Dark One Dagger and Excalibur meet. But then I think the sword is going to be destroyed somehow. Or King Arthur is going to end up living in Storybrooke as well now, but he's always going to have Excalibur, and it's never going to be the Dark One Dagger anymore. And the darkness, I don't know, you know, we don't really know where that came from. So we'll see some, like, seal to the end of that. But, uh, you know, Emma's dark, you know? There's not even, like, a side of her as of right now that's really saying, you know, I'm still good. She's completely saying, she's saying, you know, I am dark now. You can't change that about me. Even though I'm still the same person, I'm just this dark, you know, witch person. And uh, it's always going to be that way. So I thought that was kind of interesting, you know, that she's really just full on darkness now. But uh, I'm really excited to see where that goes and how that corresponds with Regina. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this episode. What were your favorite moments? Which story do you love the most? And uh, what do you think is going to happen with Emma? Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to click, share, like, subscribe. And I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. And keep riding, guys. Bye.